If you were to ask someone what their favorite part of the Thanksgiving meal was, what they're most thankful for on Thanksgiving, anybody who doesn't say the stuffing is lying to someone, probably to themselves. This is Kenji Lopez-Alt of Serious Eats and the Food Lab, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make my favorite sage and sausage stuffing, or dressing if you wanna call it dressing, I don't care. It's really easy, only a few ingredients. You can make it ahead and bake it off in the day of. Here's how we do it. Start by preheating your oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, cut two and a half pounds of bread into cubes. I like crustless white Pullman loaves for their moist, tender texture, but you can use heartier bread if you prefer. For soft bread, I find a sharp chef's knife cuts better than a bread knife. Transfer the bread to two rimmed baking sheets, then place them in the oven to toast for about 45 minutes, rotating the pans halfway through cooking. Our goal here is to dry the bread out which also allows it to absorb more flavor down the line. Stale or not, it really makes no difference at all. Now to start making our flavor base. Begin by melting a stick of butter in a large Dutch oven over medium-high heat, swirling it until the foaming starts to subside. Now add a pound and a half of sage sausage or breakfast sausage. To break it up, I like to use a potato masher. You've probably already got it out for your mashed potatoes, and it makes short work of crumbling ground meat. It's much easier than using a spoon. In about eight minutes, when the sausage is mostly cooked through, add a chopped yellow onion, four chopped ribs of celery, two cloves of minced garlic, and a quarter cup of minced fresh sage leaves. Cook, stirring until the vegetables are softened. This should take about 10 minutes longer. Then take the pan off of the heat. Now for the liquids. I like my stuffing to be very moist, with a texture almost like savory bread pudding. To get this, I combine three eggs with a quarter cup of minced fresh parsley leaves and two cups of chicken or turkey broth, then I whisk it all together. To keep the eggs from setting as I add them to the hot sausage mixture, I first add another two cups of broth to the sausage to cool it down. Then I slowly drizzle in the egg mixture, stirring with a wooden spoon the entire time. Now add the dried bread cubes to the pot. At first it's going to seem like way too much bread, but as you gently fold the mixture together, the bread should absorb every last drop. That's it. Keep folding. Keep folding. Keep folding. And there we are. At this stage, you can save the mixture in the fridge for a few days. When you're ready to bake and serve, Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, then butter a 13 by 9 inch casserole dish. Transfer the mixture to the dish and then spread it out evenly with a wooden spoon, leaving the top surface kind of rough for better surface area. Cover it tightly with aluminum foil. This is going to help it steam during the first stage of cooking, which should give you moisture and results. Transfer it to the oven and bake for about 45 minutes. The internal temperature of the stuffing should register around 150 degrees at this stage. Take off the foil and continue baking until the stuffing is browned and crisp, about 15 to 20 minutes longer. We're getting just about ready to serve it now. When you pull it out from the oven, you want to see it jiggle slightly in the middle, like a good custard pie. Okay, actually it should jiggle a lot. And that's the real key to this stuffing, the moist, custard-like center packed with buttery, savory flavor contrasting with the crisply brown crust all around. Let it cool slightly, sprinkle it with some more parsley, and then it's just missing one last thing. What was that again? Oh right, the gravy. Never forget the gravy. <laughs> 